What's up, everybody? Dan Hickman here, your host. Welcome back to the Competitive Edge podcast to help fathers learning from fathers. Today, we got a special guest, David Megida. He is a member of the Spartan Pro Team, founder of Elevate Interval Fitness, and commentator for Spartan Race broad Broadcast. The author of the Essentials in Obstacle Race Training, High Rocks Elite 15, and DECA athlete as well. He's, he just jumped in that a little last minute, but I think you, you killed it towards the end right away. It was good to watch. Thanks, man. Thank you. That's, a, that's yeah, a nice, quite the intro. Yeah, man. I, 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 try, I try my best. Um, but, you know, some other things I kind of looked at uh, when we first connected, I was looking at the messages, 100 push-ups, 50 pull-ups last year. That's when I, uh, I kind of started following you. I did 21 days straight. And then I heard you in your podcast, I think with, uh, with, uh, Rich, where you said you might've may maybe like injured your shoulder. So it was kind of a blessing that I stopped at 21 days. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's why I hurt my shoulder. I just know that I did hurt my shoulder and then I was having trouble like keeping up. I did about six months of the every night, right before bed, I do my hundred pushups, my 50 pull-ups and it annoyed my wife to no end. Cause I, you could do it at any time of the day and just, you know, like as the way my days would always work out, like I'd I wake up at like four on, on most days and, and get in to work at like five, five thirty, depending. And, and then I do my coaching and then I squeeze my workout in and then you get on to like the rest of your work day, get home, kid, wife, all that stuff. And then you're like, oh. I never did my push-ups and pull-ups. And so like sometimes it's just always ended up being a nighttime thing for me. And then sometimes you'd uh you'd be like warm and cozy in bed and it'd be like eleven at night and you'd be like, damn it. And you'd like get up out of bed. I my wife would be like, What is wrong with you? And I'd be like on the side of the bed, just like cranking out push-ups and going to the I hung a I hang those uh those duonamic uh pull up like little little pull-up straps from yep. my door frame just because they're so small and portable so i'll just be swinging from the door frame and um when i stopped doing it my wife was like listen i think that was really good for you but i'm so glad that you stopped doing this every night like while we're getting ready for bed yeah man i love i mean that says a lot about you though i mean you're so determined the man in the mirror like I, that's one thing that attracted me to your profile and you as an athlete is just you're so determined so focused like you don't give like a fuck about other people. Like you just do your thing. Like, I love that. And the fact that um, I can resonate with you being strong and you're great at running. And at the time, I think I wasn't really great at running. Like I'm better, but I love the fact that you're super strong and you you run really well. So that's good stuff. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to have you kind of just, uh, just introduce yourself. Tell me that just in a nuts. Quick, you know, nutshell, what is, who is David McGinnis? A lot of people know, but there are dads out there not in the hybrid space that don't know who you are. So, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, David McGinnis is, that's me. Uh, I, I'm a, a guy who's just very passionate about fitness. I've always been a pretty competitive person, but I like to think that I, I do it in a pretty healthy way, which is like you find this this space to kind of unleash your competitive juices. And that is like, for me, it's hybrid racing uh, and road racing and other events like that. Um, and then because you're able to unleash it there, you're able to like maintain a much less like toxic level of competition with the rest of your life, which uh, for me is great because I used to be so competitive about everything. Um, but I am a, a gym owner. I, I own a studio, Elevate Interval Fitness that you mentioned before. And I coach hundreds of athletes there. Um, my my crown jewel that I have there is my hybrid athlete program where we coach uh, athletes that are training for hybrid fitness races like High Rocks and DecaFit, uh, marathon, ultra marathon, halves, things like that, uh, Ironmans, just kind of like the people that are like, they approach their training and they're like, okay, I'm not just working out. I have, a, I have groups of athletes that we coach that like the average person goes to the gym, they want to sweat, they want to have a good time, they want to feel like they accomplished something. But that, like, if you ask them, like, what's your goal, the average person is going to turn to you and say, like, you know, like, be fit, you know, feel good, work out a few days a week, lose a little weight. But the people in my hybrid program, they're all like, oh, yeah, like, I'm, I'm running Badwater 135 in July, or I'm running, like, I've got High Rocks in Munich, or I've got, like, they have, like, they set lofty goals and they have yeah. like short-term, intermediate, long-term goals. And so like, that's my, like, that's my baby that I love coaching. 
And so That's cool. what I've gotten to do is take this sport, hybrid racing, that I've fell on, fallen in love with in the last couple of years. And now I get to share that love with all these athletes that I uh, coach up, uh, teach them the things that I had to learn through my own mistakes so they don't have to, and um, share this passion for a new way to approach fitness and a new perspective on fitness that is really changing their lives completely because they're all all in on racing and like looking for these same outlets that that um, they previous never pre- previously never thought about. And so uh, it's it's been a, a fun journey for me. Um, I still love to do other things. I love to, you know, race marathons. I don't know if I love to race marathons. I race marathons. Uh, I do it because I I love the challenge. It's a, it's a freaking grind, but I I have big lofty goals in that event space still, and I still have some some goals at the end of the line in terms of like doing some hundred milers and some some really long ultras and things like that. Um, getting out on the bike and doing some long bike events as well. But uh, the rest of me is I love my family, man. Like I've got my daughter Nora is eleven months in just a few more days she'll be 11 months old and wow. uh, my wife Kate uh, we we always connected originally over running and running and beer we would go like that's how we started dating was we just go uh, out cool. like, drive out to the mountains go do like a two-hour long run and then go grab some beers afterwards and the next thing you know we were married like that's awesome and I saw I, I searched your numbers in the deck of leaderboard and I saw your wife's name so I was like you both are on there I love yeah, it. she. I convinced her to run at World Championships. I convinced her to run the deck of fit on the first day, yeah, and the strong on the second day. And she was like, "That was super fun." She didn't. I don't think she expected it to be so fun. Yeah. Um, and that's so for anybody listening who who doesn't do deck of fit or high rocks, these are just really cool events where you combine uh, all these different elements of fitness, like fitness stations, and then yeah. maybe it has running with deco maybe it doesn't have running uh depends mm-hmm. on which one you choose for but, everybody but yeah but but essentially they're like they're all in their own way a sprint chipper some are just longer than others so like a really good yeah. high rocks times around an hour a really good deck of fit times around 30 minutes and then if you get down to like the strong it's like 12 minutes um and so they're just a fun way to take your fitness utilize it unleash it and then yeah. it's great benchmark testing too that's cool man and going back to what you said earlier I love the fact that you're helping people with everyday life, but you're not just targeting the regular YMCA, LA Fitness, the people that are in the corner, you know, with their selfies and the phones and working out. You're targeting people that have a goal and you're helping them be better. So when they they race, they're better than they can do it by themselves. I coach them all, man. And the thing I say is like, not everybody is going to adopt the mindset that they have to be training for something like i believe that you should always be training for something like you should always have a goal three six nine months out always like just yeah you accomplish that goal what was the next thing on your calendar like you're always the next thing on the calendar that's like burning a hole through you right but that lights a fire under you that's what just kind of scares you a little bit and keeps you motivated and like that's what makes it fun yeah and and they and they should be different like you shouldn't just be doing the one thing always. And, but, but some people don't have that mindset. Like some people just really want to like work out to be fit. And so my goal is to kind of coax them into trying a little bit more, but yeah. as a coach, you also just kind of have to understand that like not everybody's going to approach it this way. And, and it's okay. I, I struggle with it cause I, I don't want it to be okay, but it's okay. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, they work out for aesthetics. Like they look, to get those six packs. They look to for image and post and stuff and all that stuff. But to be honest, when you have a specific goal, it, the, that stuff automatically comes to you. Like you're, you know, it's like, I don't know where you're more in shape than when you were focusing on trying to get the six pack of ads, you know, uh, it just happens and comes to you automatically. Exactly. So, but yeah, so big thing for you is you're a veteran racer, right? You are known for racing, but now first time father about to be the first year how has that transition been uh, from your wife being pregnant to having a child and then now racing, taking care of a child? Man, it's, it's all been so different. I think because before she was pregnant, Kate was like my training partner. And so yeah. like a lot of my big workouts, Kate would be doing them too. And so it was great. It, like, I think it really bolstered our relationship and, and, 
Um, it's like a, one of the foundational pieces of our marriage is that like we share fitness and working out. And then when she got pregnant, it became harder for her to do the same level of workouts that I was doing. She trained pretty much up until she gave birth, like super impressive. Like she'd still be on the treadmill dropping, you know, six miles of yeah, like intervals and like, you know, lifting weights and push. She was pushing sleds up until the week she had the baby. Like she's, she's one tough mama, but, um, sure. but the, the baby came, she needed a lot of recovery time. We weren't sleeping a lot. So training became like very hard. Um, once she bounced back, one of the tough things became like, okay, she's back at work. How do we balance this so that she has time to train? I have time to train. So like this morning, for example, like I, I didn't have to coach this morning, but instead of me getting up and getting my workout done early, she went into my gym and did one of the workouts, the hybrid athlete workouts yeah. at my gym. And I didn't get to work out till my lunch break today. I had to take the baby to daycare. Then I went in and did some administrative work. And so I just finished a nine mile run like right before this. So, yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, so when's that other workout going to come? Like, where's my strength work going to come? Probably at like, honestly, like 7.30 or 8 PM tonight. Once I tuck the baby in, like I'll go down, uh, I'm sitting in my foyer right now, which is like my yeah. office. It's also my gym. I've got like, a skier and dumbbells and kettlebells. And a yeah, I remember listening. And it's pretty cool. I was and like, so, man, I looked at my, I looked at my gym when you were, I was listening to you when I was working out, and I was like, I don't have the flooring, man. But <laughs> dude, the flooring, the flooring is clutch because I'll, yeah. I'll put three hundred pounds on the barbell and just lift down here, and I've got great gym flooring. Goals for um, sure, man. But it's, um, but I'll, I, I'm trying to get in the habit of, of just kind of like doing like thirty minute lifts in the evenings a few days a week if i'm not like like yesterday i woke up at five sunday morning and i have to get up at five on my day off and drive into my own gym because the gym all the classes we had yesterday were sold out through like 2 30 p.m so if i wanted to work out i had to get in before the classes so and i went and did a like a 75 minute grind workout with running rowing and weights and so if I'm if I'm doing a workout like that, I don't need a supplement a supplementary lift. But if I'm just running or I'm just on the bike or something like that, then I need to take the time to to add some extra lifts. So finding the time for it's been a little tricky. You have to be comfortable with like, okay, am I lifting after I've eaten dinner? Like, am I lifting? Yeah. Uh, am I lifting like once I put the baby to sleep, or like, or if I put her down for a nap at like three thirty p.m. and I've just gotten home, but you know, like doesn't sound like a late time for people but like when your work day starts at 5 a.m mm -hmm. then 3 30 p.m to like kind of you're kind of in that like slump of your day where you're like yeah. kind of groggy yes, and yeah and so you know you're 10 and a half hours into your day of like work day 11 and a half from like when you woke up and you're like okay right now i've got to go put in like a hard workout that's tough and so adjusting yeah. to that and the understanding of like before I could work out when I felt like it. Now I work out when the baby's asleep is a, it was a big change. Yeah. I'm glad you're figuring that out ahead of time. But once you get three, like they did, Oh my God. Um, you just, I mean, I work out sometimes like 10, sometimes 10 at night, sometimes dude, like you got to do what you got to do. I mean, I work from home, so I run my own business so I can make my own schedule. But, um, man, <sighs> You got to fit it in when you can. Sometimes, I mean, I planned on working out this morning, but there were some other situations going on with family. Um, so tonight's going to be a bigger workout, but it's that's what it's all about. But I mean, I, I like what you said. You guys had your, your systems in place, but then once you had your child, your daughter, you recalibrated. And Everything's out the window. So now it's exactly. like, you know, if I finish coaching from like 5.30 in the morning until like 11 in the morning, it's like immediately at 11.00. You have to go from putting all this energy into other people and you need to just take a deep breath, not sit down, not stop to get food and just yeah. go and be like, okay, can I willpower 60 minutes or 90 minutes right now hard? And mm -hmm. um, that's been a tough adjustment for me because before the baby, one of the things that I was doing a lot of was like getting getting some of my training in at like 8 a.m. or getting some of my training or, or going yeah. in and taking a 5.30 a.m. class. Like, I like working out early and personally. Um, no, it's the best time for sure. It really is. And you yeah. like I, my body feels the best at like 
between 5.30 and 7 in the morning. Like that is that is Second when I'm going to get optimal workouts in. And mm-hmm. so if I could advise anybody, like if you're if you're not if like if you're getting back into fitness or or you're trying to maximize your fitness is get that thing in at 6 a.m. Like it is the best. I Every day when I'm dragging my corpse through like a 7 p.m. workout, I'm like, this is horrific. Like I'll do it because I I don't always love the process. I love I love competition and I want to be ready for that. And sometimes I love the process, but sometimes you just got to do it. Like it just sucks and you just do it. Yep. Absolutely, man. And, and I, I can relate to that. But the only thing I'd say is you're doing it right. You and Kate are doing it right. Cause when I had my firstborn, I was thinking about, cause when I was, when I was kind of writing the show notes for this, I was thinking like, man, when Mia came into our life, what was I doing? And I was like, I was working nonstop cubicle life. Like just, that was my sport was the work. And my wife wanted to get ice cream or she wanted to eat this, eat that working out was no longer a focus for me. So I'm sure it's like that for a lot of dads out there. And once they kind of lose themselves, it's hard for them to even get back. So, well, you know, they say, they say you make time for the things that matter. And, and I think it's not even like, okay, like a vanity fitness thing. Like it's not even, it's not even like that. It's, it's like this. I can't envision a life where working out isn't 60 minutes of my day. Like that's, that's not even an option. And yeah. yes, I'll have a rest day every once in a while. But like, if I take like two days off in a row, I feel like shit, like not just physically, but like mentally, like kind of in a fog. So, um, I mean, we're talking, I've gone, I don't know, 25 years, 30 years of working out every day. Like, let's say if it, it starts when you're like five years old, right? Doesn't it? Like you're, you're yeah. running, you're on your first like soccer team or whatever. Like, yeah. I don't think, like, I think it's really been like 30 plus years of like an hour plus of exercise on average a day. Like, there's never been a time I haven't had that. Yeah, and it pays off. I mean, think about all the things you accomplish. It's just doing that little extra or taking that seriousness of making sure no matter what, you have 60 minutes a day. It may also kind of makes you feel alive, it sounds like. You know what I mean? For me, it does. When I work out, I just feel amazing. And then the, I'm ready to give to the world because I gave to myself first, first thing in the morning. So yeah. And I, I feel like a lot, a lot of times you start a workout and you're like, uh, this isn't it today. You know, like you just don't have it. And then um, 30 minutes in, you're like, you, I just like have a rule for myself. I'm just like, I'm just going to go for like, like today, my, my hammy was a little tight. I ran with the dog, I dropped him off. And then I was starting to run again. And I was like, I don't know, man. Like it's just, just not it today. And yeah. then I was like, you know what? Let's just go slow. I'm just gonna go slow. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, I'm just gonna go slow today. And then the next thing I knew, I was like, okay, we get like another six miles on top. So I ended up getting to nine, and it was like, okay, that wasn't a waste. Like that, that was a great day. I could have, I was gonna throw in the towel at three miles, and I was like, yeah, look at that, not a waste of a day. And so like I always have this rule, like. Just go like 30 minutes. Just commit to like 30 minutes. And then, you know, after that, yeah. you'll see. I like that because I can relate. On Sunday, I was up late with my wife. We were just watching TV and, you know, because that's like our time to kind of, when the kids are asleep and we have our time instead of our kids jumping on our back. But on Sunday, I woke up crazy early, got to the gym at 5.30 to work out with uh, some High Rocks guys um, and got there. Dude, I, I just wasn't feeling it. Compared to last week, I just, I was tired. We all started. Uh, they, they paired me up with someone else who's good at high rocks. And then the first, we did three rounds. The first uh, round and a half, I sucked. And then that competitive side comes about. And then I just turned it on and ended up like closing the gap and, and winning that day for that those three rounds. Um, so I, I, I hear you on that. But I, I always have the mindset of, hey, you can at least go through the motions. Uh, but the fact that I like that commit to 30 minutes because you are starting to feel it after that. Um, you know, the body starts the, body, the body starts adjusting like 20 mm-hmm. minutes in. And that's the thing. You commit to 30, then that last 10 minutes in that 30, you're like, oh, you know what? I actually felt pretty good. Maybe I'll keep going a yeah. little bit. Like it, it really does. It takes it 20 minutes and all of a sudden like the engine warms up, everything starts humming and mm-hmm. you kind of like time starts skipping by a little faster. Absolutely. So when did the, you saw, you talked about soccer at five. So walk us through when this competitive bug came into your body where you're like, whoa, 
this is fun winning or beating or doing better when that happened for you i was like that psychotic child that like i like wept if i lost something i just like cared you cared oh my god it was like too much so i'm i it was like actually like toxic competitiveness and so (laughs) um there is like this this like flame that burns in me that like i like to say like most of the time it's like a pilot light and then Mm -hmm. but then it can ignite and like yeah sometimes like i'll be in the middle of a race and i'll be like in the depths of absolute pain that like unimaginable pain and i'll be like fuck yeah like i just and the, yeah, and no, the rage and the, the rage will take over and, and right when you you and god got, got to the uh the skier he kept running and then you yelled out loud and cursed and, and then you were just like from there i think like you took that rage into the assault bike and i was like oh shit yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. pretty cool yeah that was that was a perfect example of it of like yeah. just just um you can it all of a sudden like i have that weird ability to like kind of you go to like to you turn into like a different human and yeah. um and so it's like a lot of what like people look at is like it's like a level of like athleticism. I, I don't necessarily know that my athleticism is like that much higher than than like most people. I think I have a switch that I flip that it doesn't flip in every race, but when it flips, You're it, on. it makes me it, that's what makes my athleticism special like that that's where it all comes from and so i had that as like a kid and then yeah. we tried really hard to try and my parents tried to like coax that out of me and like just chill me out like a little bit and and it worked but i i it definitely comes on sometimes and not always just in competition like i'll just be very intense about something out of nowhere um yeah. but i was a i was a soccer player and a swimmer as a kid and mm. you know i was an okay swimmer like i made all stars a few times so i wasn't like great at swimming but it was running when um my they put me into a race when i was like fourth grade it was like fourth graders through eighth graders and i i blasted all these older kids in this mile race and then um my dad was like okay there's something here and he started telling me about this like this sport called cross country that i would get to run when i got older and i was all hyped up about it and um um we he took me to a 5k and i won that and then the next race I ran was a 10K and I won that. And it was like, I'm in sixth grade at this point. And they're like, okay, there, there's there's really something here. And so I got, I yeah. my school was like a grade six through 12. I started running with the varsity guys at uh, eight wow. and sixth grade. And so wow, I was running like, awesome. I was running like 35, 40 miles a week since like sixth grade. So wow. um, it it's made a difference. Like there's no question. I was like kind of yeah. like a little child prodigy, but like, it's it's weird. like I was running, I think I ran five k in seventh grade in like eighteen twelve, and then like like just fast little kid, and then cool. um, and then um, you know you start getting older and bigger, and other kids start catching up, and so by the time I got to college, I was just kind of like a just like a regular old college level runner, like probably not good enough to be scoring on varsity for most schools, um, yeah, and I ended up like giving up running for a bit played a little college football actually just because something I always wanted to do. Um, I was a wrestler and I was captain of my wrestling team in high school. So like I knew how to use my body. And everything. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think cool. I'm a huge believer in like play all the sports and like do a combat sport. Do I'm a huge believer in individual sports because I think that like the idea of being able to control your own destiny creates a greater level of, of independence with your training and dedication to your training. Cause you're like, Hey, look, I got nobody to blame, but me and nobody to rely on, but me. I, I actually agree with that. Cause growing up since like four years old, playing ice hockey and team sports, like baseball, football, all that stuff. Like you have to rely on the team. Like if you're playing shortstop, you know, someone behind you might get that grounder. Like, you know, if you're a defense and you pop up forward and someone gets a breakaway, you know, the forward's going to cover you, but you know, the goalie's going to make the save, but at the same time, like when you do individual sports, that was new for me. So doing, uh, doing high rocks and doing DECA was a different high. I was like, Oh, cool. This is all about me. I don't have, to, this is not a full team. It's 26 people or 20 people. So I can relate with that, man. So how was your, uh, relationship with sports with your dad? 
Um, he's he was never really like an athlete. Like he played a little baseball. He was a wrestler in high school, but not he wasn't really the athlete in his family. He doesn't really know where all this came from, to be honest. Um, but he's been supportive. Like he used to go to my games as a kid, and uh, he was he drove the running for me. Like he's the one who really pushed me into running from a mm-hmm. young age. Um, or the day after I won, I won that mile in fourth grade, he took me to the track to see if I could do it again. And yeah. I remember I ran, I ran, um, I, I think I'd run a six thirty the day before. And so I, I went back Crazy. and, um, I tried to beat it and I went like six forty five. and he's like, no, that was pretty good. And I was like, do it again. And he like, <laughs> he like set up the watch again and I immediately ran another one and it was like six fifty. And I was like, do it again. And he lined me up and uh and I went like 635 and I was like, do it again. And he was like, No, we're stopping. Like my my dad Yeah, yeah, because you don't know your limits, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But but uh so I here I am running mile repeats, not knowing what the hell's going on as a as a little kid. Um yeah. but my dad used to be that guy. He would like he used to have this thing. I don't know if your viewers are have can see or if they're just gonna be hearing, but he used to he used to do this thing with his fingers down the corners of his mouth, like he would yep. drag them down the corners of the mouth like that. And that was that he would tell me that he wanted me to visualize that I had the blood of my competitions dripping out of the corners of my mouth. And so he would, if I was in the middle of a game and he's on the sidelines, I'd look over and he would just do this with his fingers to the corners of his mouth. Like, uh, that's hey, cool. Like, so let's see the blood. Hey, and, turn it uh, on. That's cool. Yeah. I, I'll never forget that. And people like, they meet my dad. They're like, that guy, that guy used to do that for you. But yeah, he, he was really into it. I love that, man. It's funny as a parent, like we say silly things, but we're talking in languages that our kids understand. Mm-hmm. So like for, I think I told my, my dad recently what I told my daughter, cause I coach my daughter in hockey, but like she would get the puck and she would just go like, if someone's right here, like she's try to go through them. Like <laughs> it's not how it works. Like you got to protect the puck. So like, you got to bring the puck out here. If someone's over here, if someone's over there, bring the puck out here. And I was like, all right, she's really big in like Jurassic park stuff. So I was like, all right, imagine if there's tons of raptors and they all want to eat that egg. Would you keep the egg over here or over here? And she's like, over here. I'm like, all right, we'll do it. And then like, like even during the game, I'll be like, come on, come on, uh, save the eggs or something like that. And she's phenomenal. Like and my dad, I told my dad about that story. And then he's like, yeah, you used to love Happy Meals so much. I used to tell you, go get that hamburger. You're hungry. So it's just <laughs> those little things, right? Yeah, it's, it's just it's funny. That's exactly it. And so it's like, so, and that stuff will live with you like forever. You know, I yeah. don't know what it is that I'm going to give my kid. Uh, but, but I know that the, the, the blood in the corners of the mouth is probably not the right one for my daughter, but, it's, <laughs> but it worked, but it worked. It was really yeah. good for me. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so awesome. Killed as a kid. You were out of nowhere prodigy. Your dad had no idea where it came from, but he supported the hell out of you. And David Megiddo was just developed. Um, as an adult, what do you, what would you say is your biggest accomplishment as an athlete? I don't know, man. A lot I of think them. it's I think honestly, I think the biggest one is just like being versatile because you know, like I've I've stood on podiums at like, you know, High Rocks World Championships and DECA World Championships and um, you know, won a bunch of Spartan races and done all that stuff and um you know, competed at world championships in so many events at this point. But um, I feel like my New York marathon that I ran 237 in was like one of my like, for me, there are guys that are way faster than that. I know that. But for me, that was like one of my crown jewel accomplishments because I'm not a marathoner. I was 192 mm-hmm. pounds that morning. And yeah. like, I'm a big boy. And I only trained for that event specifically. Like I, I was, I knew that that was coming. So I ran a lot of miles that year, but I was training for high rocks and I, it was six weeks after the high rocks world championships uh, or seven weeks. So I did a six week training block and then shut it down before the race. And I, on a six week training block for a marathon, I ran, a, I ran a six minute mile pace for it. It was like, for me, that was huge. My goal was to run 237. I ran 237. I had to fight the cramps off in the it's last wild. few miles. And I just jammed a thumb into it and just said, let's, let's fucking go. And, yeah. um, and I just wept at the finish line. Like I cried like a baby at the finish yeah, line. And, uh, and it was just like, I couldn't even help myself. Like I thought it was just going to be like, I'd be smiling and 
happy, but like they have a hundred people lined up at the finish, like every five yards, there's a person on your right and your left. And all they do is clap and tell you congratulations. And you just walk through this. And I just like, I just like broke down. Like I couldn't even, it was such an emotional effort to, to, to get through that and to, to hit your splits the whole race and just how miserable you are at the end of an event like that. Um, so that's up there, you know, yeah. I think there's a few. Well, it sounds like an amazing day. Um, it's an, yeah. So there are dads out there um, that are struggling right now and with time management, what type of obviously waking up early um, being, versatile and changing your days and communicating with your wife, what other tips for time management would you have to, to either take back your health or um, just continue being a better dad athlete? Well, uh, one thing I would say is you just need to kind of establish rules for yourself. And one of those rules is like, I'm working out today. That's just one of the rules. And like, whether that's 20 minutes and you're just like squeezing in, you know, whether it's just like a couple sets of a hundred push-ups, you know, and you could do a hundred push-ups in three minutes or four minutes or five minutes. So it's not that big an ask to be like, okay, like I don't have time to work out, work out today, but I'm going to do a hundred push-ups like every two hours. Like I'm just going to get up from my desk and do a hundred. And like, you have time for that. Like if you had time to go take a dump, you had time to go do that. So yeah. like, that's one of the things that I would say. The other thing I'd say is, um, not every workout needs to be hard. So, you know, for me, like sometimes I just take my laptop and I bought a little, uh, thing that mounts onto my spin bike and I'll just right. put my laptop there and I'll just, while I'm doing my emails and stuff, I'll just pedal. Yeah. And it's something. That's cool. And cause something's always better than nothing. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. I'm actually seeing that now. Um, I mean, last year I think I went hard all the time. And I kind of burnt out and then I'll take like a week off and it was just like, I would just go hard and then kind of lose missed days. And, you know, the last six months, dude, I've just been go running slower. I've been doing more longer workouts at a zone two pace and it's just, it's really paying off. So dude, long, slow is so effective. People just don't realize because the thing is people either spend all their time going long and slow. Or yeah. they spend none of their time going long and slow. Mix but the up. thing is, like, so, like, if I look at, like, the way my weeks are structured, like, yesterday I did like a 75-minute grind workout with, with running and weights and rowing and stuff. And then today I just did, like, a nine-mile slow run. I'll do a lift later today. Tomorrow I'm going to go do some high-intensity work. Wednesday I'm going to go. I think I lost you. Gotcha. We're good. Sorry. I had a phone call come in uh, and we were just constantly mixing that stuff up. Um, and so it's, it's approaching each day differently. Like, like I know that, um, you know, today you're, I'm going to get in some heavy lifts down at the, at the end of the day. And so you're, you're adding all these elements and it's doing two things. One, it's making you incredibly versatile because you have uh, aerobic conditioning and threshold and strength, but it's also making it so that your training isn't beating the ever loving crap out of you because absolutely, because if you're just hammering workouts every day, your body just yeah. can't sustain that. And I, I think I learned watch them play no phone, just present, just literally conversations with them, hearing them play. It, it was awesome. Just their, their imagination and everything. Hey, hold on so. one can, can we pause one second? So, um, yeah. let my finger in. Hey, hey, Chuck. Good. I'm going to open the garage. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oscar, get in the house. Hey, so all good. So um, obviously you heard your dog bark in the background. So it leads me to my next question. Yeah. You know, what, it, what would you say is, it's a fun question. What would you say is your spirit animal and why? Oh, man. Um... <laughs> It's gotta be Oscar, my dog. Uh, we're like the yeah. same. We're the same. We're both full of energy, fiercely loyal, um, always looking to train. Um, but uh, if it's not Oscar, it might be it might be a cheetah. That was what I was as a kid. 
So I was my my uh, I was known in school as Cheetah Magita, and so it's just like that they're the fastest thing on earth, That's man. Awesome. That is an awesome name. Yeah, I had some crazy silly names too, man. It was like kind of speed, like, I don't know. It's like Danny Speedy Gonzalez or like all this other stuff like Flash or, or Forever Lungs on the ice because I never wanted to get off and change. Or like, come on, Forever Lungs, get off. Uh, just stupid stuff. Well, my, but, my coaches in high school called me Tenacious D. So Yeah, man. I love it. So now you have Tenacious on a tattoo here. So it's cool, man. Yeah, that's dope. Um, so... One more thing, because I forgot to mention the the Europe Championships. Awesome job, man! I mean, no USA men were there except for you, right? Yeah, yeah, not the day I wanted to have, but um, good good opportunity to learn some things. Um, yeah, I I have a way that I like to race, and it's especially in an event like High Rocks, like being uh, such a long grind of an event. I like to be comfortable early and then close really strong and uh, I went out with the leaders kind of stupidly like knowing full well that they like to go out fast the, the, the guys yeah. in particular I was with and thinking you know in my head you know there's this idea of like having to maintain contact um, and then if they break the chain on you like not being able to pull yourself back in but I don't think that that's the case in a high rocks race I think that is in like DECA but in high rocks you can always pull yourself back as long as your body feels good and um I just started not feeling good. I, I think the engine got a little too hot too early. I ran too fast. I skied too fast. I pushed the sled too fast. And then yeah. um, my back started tightening up. And then that is big trouble for you. Cause yeah. then um, you could, I was even seeing it in the pictures of myself running. I was like, God, the stride looks so tight. It just wasn't mm -hmm. comfortable. Um, and so I didn't have the day I wanted. I still finished eighth. Um, I think, I honestly authentically believe I, I had a podium in me that day if I just had run smart. And yeah. So we've got the North American championships coming up and we'll see. I think um, yeah, I have the fitness to do great things there, but I have, yeah, to, I have to run smart. Yeah, man. It's the, it's all learning. Every single race is a learning session for all of us. I mean, I talking about I, when I saw that video last night, just seeing, uh, I think it's like Wench. Or, I forget who it was. There's people that just jumped that line the start line before they even said go um and it, it was so aggressive but actually i toyed with something because everyone was so excited to race against hunter um in pasadena that time when he only did five stations mm -hmm. uh last year um and i was in his heat and everyone's all like trying you know victor quesada everybody was trying to see how they match up anaz and all these guys um but the, i decided to do something different and i just i let everybody go and they all and come back because huh? it's just a chip it's a it's a chip thing so it doesn't matter so you don't need to go off the hot the, the start line for that high heart rate to go crazy so i just let those guys go i counted to five and then i went and then i, I caught up to victor quesada on on the uh the rower and ended up winning so it's like it you don't have to go off with everybody just to be in the cameras like you said it's a little hot you know but um Everyone has different strategies, but I tried something different. And I kind of liked it. So yeah, I, cool. I think that's the way to race high rocks. And the the only thing is like, you have to be really dialed in with your splits and know what you're supposed to hit. And and if you can do that, you'll run a better race. It's just, yeah. you have, it's a gamble because if the guys get too far ahead, can you reel them back in? You know? Exactly. It's kind of, it is like a gamble. And I think I've seen you do race like that quite a bit where you kind of just you're controlling yourself and then there's a moment like you just turn it on. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I should have done. And that's typically how I do race. And, uh, I fully, I think people are now going to really underestimate me in the next race, which is good. Like good. Yeah. Underestimate me. And then because I got beat by people that I don't feel I had any business losing to. And, and, uh, but that's racing, man. Like these guys are all good. Like everyone yeah. is like, Oh, well, like it's bad to lose this person. No, these people are all good. Like at this level, um, unless you're Hunter, you're pretty much always going to have a day where like you can be beat, and there's yes, days where you can't be beat. And so, um, I still think I can beat anyone in the world right now. But I, yeah, have I mean, to your fitness. Mind. Yeah, I agree. But it, your fitness is ridiculous right now if you think about it, because it. You just jumped in a deck a last minute. You don't. You don't. You didn't have a strategy down. You didn't have 
the technique down to practicing it all the time. Like all of us have been practicing it since February last year. And then you, I don't know where you jump into it and you're already on the leaderboard on all three. So it's like, <laughs> that's, that's all good, good, positive stuff, man. Congrats on that. Thank it's you. good yeah, shit. Deca, I, part of me wishes that I hyper focused on it for just a little bit like Rich yeah. and uh, Kent had, because yep. I think I, I would have been competitive enough to maybe beat them if I had, but you know, it's, it's, uh, I feel like I did pretty well, all things considered, getting, you know, fourth in deck of fit, fifth in the strong, and third in deck of mile world championships. It's yeah, pretty, I, pretty I, good. And then, you know, we got the, them all down here. we got the win in the team race. So, you know, I, know, was, I saw that. It's not easy to do deck of strong sub 12. You got sub 12 and deck of strong. Mile, you got sub 18. Deck of fit, sub 30. Like, these are all legit stuff, man. It's, <laughs> I know you're always you're grinding, always trying to be better and better, but just you know, just relish. Even if it's like the five seconds of right now talking to me, dude, just relish, dude. It's it's awesome. Yeah, um, I think it's, um, it's there's an opportunity next year. I think sub twenty nine is very much in play for me in the fit, and then um, I think low elevens for the strong, sub seventeen for the for the mile. Like that's all in play. It's like the mile. I I've only done that one twice, and so the, I did the, my yeah. qualifier where I like barely qualified, and then I had this one where I, honestly I could have gone much faster. Um, yeah, I think I think doing that as the fourth event of four in a weekend that that obviously is not super beneficial. It's a lot. Yeah. No, it's not. that's hard. And and by the end of that weekend, I was pretty. I was ready for it to be over. I, one of my guys I coached came up with me, and he did two events, one each day, and he's like. I don't know how the hell you just did four of these in a weekend. It was like, yeah, he didn't even want to do his second event. And so I've been training since I was five. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's like in the grand scheme of things, it's like, okay, I got to run for 17 minutes or 12 minutes. It gets so much shorter. So yeah. you can wrap your mind around it. You like, I can get through this. It's just another why. Yeah. And I love seeing you at your baby and carriage. Like that is pure dad life right there, man. Yeah. Uh, you got the whole famine for that one. That was special. Oh. I bring my three girls there. I swear I, I wouldn't be paying attention. I'd be running around. Um, it's funny though. I get to face. It's nothing like FaceTime and your family after you win something. That you're yeah, on, I know. Though. I know. It's like huge. you and you in uh, New York, right? High Rocks, New York. Yeah, man. That was huge for me. I just, uh, my, my coach Heidi, she just said, Hey, you're going to be ready as you ever be just in two days notice. Let's go to New York. I'm like, all right. There you go. And then just out of nowhere, it just took me over. So it was cool, man, because it took the overthinking out of it and just show up and just do and it. Do it. So, so you got a big race this weekend, huge one. Yeah. What else you got going on for this year? Um, man, so North American Championships, and then um, I've got a few more High Rocks events on the schedule. Um, we'll see how many. You know, obviously, I want to get my my World Championship qualifier. I have not for the Elite Fifteen. I haven't got that locked in yet, but um, if I can get, you know, a good day out of one of these next few, few races, you know, I expect to be there. And then, um, and then we'll see, man, like I, I got to get some decas under my belt. Yep. And then I think towards the end of the year, I may try and sneak another marathon in. I was thinking I was supposed to do Berlin last year, but then I got injured. I fractured my shin and I just kind of had to do a hard stop on that and, and kind of reset and figure out like, what am I gonna, you know, I had to change my training. It just wasn't, I wasn't ready. So I don't know if I have the grind of another marathon in me right now this year, we'll see. But, you got a lot on your plate. <laughs> but maybe California international marathon, which is in like December, that might be like the right one. We'll, we'll see. We'll, I've got it. I've got to feel it out. And then, you know, I've got some friends trying to get me to do some ultras and some other stuff. And Yeah. Ultras is kind of trending right now. It seems like it's fun. Ultra is fun. And, um, you know, it's, it's different. Um, I've got a, a team one that, a that a friend of mine has been trying to get me to do with, uh, with her. And, um, it's like a 70 mile, uh, race with three people and you have to stay together the whole time. So, Oh, okay. it seems kind of fun. Like, I think you're, you're running through like, like from the beach and off on a, like through the woods and the, it's just like a cool, I, you know, this stuff is That's like, it's fun. nice to be out of like a gym setting for a little bit. Yeah. Um, for and, sure. and outside of that, man, I don't know, man, family time, my wife and I never took a honeymoon. So I think we're looking at doing that. 
Nice, man. Family first. It's all about, man. So where can everybody follow you? How can we support you? Uh, any sponsors? Obviously, your gym. Um, what do you got? Okay. Um, well, you can find me at my gym, Elevate Interval Fitness. Uh, you can go to train at elevate.com to try a week trial of classes. Um, if you're in the D.C. area, you're invited. Come join. Come hang. Join the fam. Um, and then outside of that, like I am, you know, you'll find me at different High Rocks events. You can always come up and say what's up. Um, I'm usually traveling with a group of athletes. So, you know, I have 15 headed to Chicago this weekend. And, um, uh, yeah, my some sponsors, I would say check out um, 10,000. They've been really great as a sponsor. Uh, they make great clothing, great shorts awesome shirts so if you're looking for some training apparel they're not athleisure they're like actual training it's like stuff um highly recommend and then oh i almost lost you for a sec um and then um let's see riverbend cbd man and those the other yep, guys are like that. just always in our corner. they were at deca too they were at deca, DECA Championship. great products great people i only cbd should be using um and then um yeah, I mean, the other stuff, the other people I work with, like, I got this great solar panel company. I swear to God. It's called City Renewables. Nice. And, um, you know, everyone's like, why why that? Like, that doesn't even make sense. And I'm like, well, when you think about it, the whole concept of energy efficiency and endurance sports actually pair really well. So um, City Renewables sponsors a lot of athletes. They sponsor boxing in the D.C. area. They sponsor me. Um, and they're just, again, it's good people. and um, so if you're in the area and you're looking to get like solar panels put in your house, I found out how you can do it without actually paying any money. We're about to do it on my house. It's pretty cool. <laughs> nice, man. So I, honestly, a pleasure. I know you got a lot going on. Dad life for sure. Any more new kids in, in the plan? Oh, my God. Come on. You like, sound like my mother. Uh, <laughs> she's like, well, we got one. She's amazing. She's, I got a perfect daughter right now, and I think that's going to be it for now. Like We're just – this is life and um, we're happy. Happens, we're, we love our family. <laughs> I got my, my daughter's a handful. She's always on the move. They say it at her daycare. It's the busiest child they've ever seen. So um, yeah, she keeps us busy, man. We're, we're good. She's going to be a quite a the little athlete. Her mom, her mom was a hell of an 800 meter runner in college. So, so she's going to be a, a monster. And yeah, uh, I think that's exactly why we moved to Florida. Like my wife's a full ride soccer player. I played minor league pro hockey. Like that's why I moved to Florida. We left the New Hampshire stuff and these kids are nuts. They're, they're so fast. It's just, it's just see them beating boys on the ice and on the yeah, soccer field. It's just, awesome. It's a proud moment, dude. That's great. It's cool. I love that. So I can't so, wait. That's what's next for me, man. It's like, like I took my yeah, daughter yeah. down the slide for the first time ever yesterday. Like, like this, yeah. all this stuff, like this is what I'm living for now. Like I can't race forever. And so yes. I will live through other people that I coach and I want to live through my kid. That is awesome. That's what it's all about. So ladies and gentlemen, no ladies, just gentlemen, fellas, um, fathers learning from fathers. We heard it live here from David Megida. This is a competitive edge podcast. Your host, Daniel Hickman. Thank you for joining us, David. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Talk Catch you later, man. Catch you later. See ya. Bye.